I just reach out to Vadishi. Welcome to another vlog that's gonna go down, and I can hear the excitement already. But uh, there's lots of stuff I want to talk about. Talk about. But first, let's briefly uh, talk about some stuff that I should have talked about a while back. First off, would be the new intro. If you haven't noticed, there's a new intro up, and uh, a lot of people outcried about the fact that I changed uh, the song. The original song was "Nieba Niva" by Leningrad, which translates to "I Would Be in Heaven," and the new song is "People of the Lie" by KMFDM, and um, I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Just I love that that that. <laughs> That heavy industrial beat is just awesome. Like when I'm driving in my car, like the glass shakes and the the ground around it is like quivering, and it's just awesome. I love I love that song, and I love I'm a big industrial fan, and uh, I think it's awesome. But uh, other than that, like things aren't going to change. The song's not going to change back. I never really liked Nievo Niva to begin with. In all honesty, there's a lot better Leningrad songs out there. But I will change the song more frequently than like once every month, like I, I've been doing. It's going to change more frequently, so... Yeah. But, uh, moving right along, website, website's coming along fantastically. Um, n no hitch-ups there. There's, uh, nothing to be, uh, worried about. And I actually got a new Let's Play that's going to go up alongside the launch of the website. It's going to launch right beside the website. And I think you guys should put that all on your radar because it's going to be awesome. At least, if it's an, if it's half as awesome as the name of the game, then it will be the best Let's Play of all time. So definitely put that one on your radar. Also, uh, Matt managed to put up a store with like... um like the the logo on shirts and stuff and on stickers and I remember there was a guy his name was Newcastle fan I remember him because he comments a lot he said that he would actually buy a shirt that had my face on it and I, I will tell you that that is I'm going to make a shirt with my face on it that you could actually buy but other than that I'm going to make like shirts that are like nods to some inside jokes from the let's plays and stuff so that'll be fun I'm excited about that also there's an idea I'm tossing around that when the site launches um an Empire Total War tournament that uh, all all the board members they sign up for who want to be part of this tournament and it's gonna be one uh, uh one loss and you're done so and then the person who is eventually undefeated uh at the top will eventually will win something like we'll gift him a steam game or something like that it'll be something real something tangible and we'll take uh all the best footage from it and put it put it up on youtube and all the replays and put them up on youtube and uh, i think it'll be a blast so if you're interested in that, please let me know, and uh, I'll start, once the website gets up, I'll start the, bu the ball rolling on that. Speaking of shirts, I don't know if you've seen my my AK-47 shirt. I can't believe I haven't worn this on a vlog before, but up here it says, you know, Mikhail Kalishnikov, all in Russian, and then there's, like, the uh, caliber and the characteristics all down the side. Then on the back, I don't know if you can see it, I hope you can, there's all the wars the AK-47 has been involved in. And yes, it is entirely badass. It is the most badass shirt I own. But, something I want to touch on briefly, I got a lot of messages asking me what I thought about Rommel's new vlog and how he was talking about Nazism and whatnot. And I'm not going to start another internet war, and all I'm going to say on that is that from an objective and intellectual standpoint, I can respect the fact that he isn't, that he's actually looking into what Nazism is. He's evaluating his opinion based on the fundamental ideas of what that party stands for, and he's not just going, well, Nazism is bad because it's Nazism, or whatever, which is what a lot of people do. Because if you do that, that's just a waste of time. You're just wasting your breath. You haven't learned anything. You have to question things, and you have to look deeper into things. And if you don't, then you never learn anything. So from that perspective, I can respect his open-mindedness about that kind of subject. And um, whether or not I agree with Nazism, I really don't. But that's based on the fundamental ideologies of the platform and of the party. I actually get a lot of uh, comments that are kind of kind of like, you know, Nazism is bad because it's Nazism. It's like, communism is bad because it's communism. It just sounds so stupid. It's like saying something like, that's bad because it's bad. Bad is bad. And it's, like, it's like a storyline for a Japanese RPG. It's just so redundant and so stupid. 
those kind of comments are gone instantaneously. But um, that's all on that front. I guess I got five minutes left. I'm gonna talk about something very briefly that's kind of been on my mind. I've been talking with uh, a subscriber. She's actually the first lady of the Let's Plays, uh, Hichi, and um, uh, yeah, do we wanna kruta devushka? No, možet nimnoška stranja. And we were talking about all kinds of random stuff, and she like eventually asked me. She's like, "Well, is there is there ever been a nice dictator?" And the first name I threw out was actually it was Fidel Castro, not Joseph Stalin. And I've been thinking about uh, good old Fidel Castro uh, quite a lot recently. Kind of reading up a bit on him, and after reading a little bit, I think he's the man. Like one, he's got like the greatest beard of all time, which. You know, any man can respect that beard. But other than that, like, when you look at what Cuba is and what he's done for Cuba, it's incredible. Like, that country has some of the best healthcare in, this, in the world, has some of the best education in the world. It has all its people are fed, all its people are educated, and all its people are healthy. And considering how small that island is and how devoid of resources that island is, that is just a miracle to me. That is like outstanding leadership. To be able to do something so great with such an area so small. I mean, Cuba has a higher life expectancy than America. And if that's not saying something, I don't know what is. If that's not saying that Fidel Castro is a good if is able to run a country if that's like saying that Fidel Castro has empathy and compassion and caring for his people for the lower down people I don't know what is it actually has it has the highest human development index of any country in that region of any central american country and almost all the south american countries it's just astounding what he's done with such limited space and such limited resources and uh, if, like, if you think Fidel Castro is bad just because he's a dictator, just because he's a communist dictator, you're a freaking moron. Like, all all those other countries in the area, all the Caribbean countries and most of the Central American countries, are just poverty-ridden cesspools. They're just crime-ridden, just terrible places to live. And if Fidel Castro hadn't been he wasn't leaning out of the country, then it would be the same thing. That in Cuba would be a crime ridden, uh, I sorry, a crime ridden poverty scum hole. And it's not. It's a beautiful place full of healthy, educated people. And I think that is a testament to how amazing a job that guy's done with the situation he was given. And I've, if you, there's some of my favorites, I actually favorited an excerpt about. Fidel Castro, but it's a little speech he did, and he starts off his speech was, we often talk about human rights, but we ought to talk about the rights of humanity. And that is such a genius statement, such a provocative statement. I love it so much, because that's like... Talking about human rights is wasting your breath, I think. Talking about the rights of humanity, that's where... I'm trying to put this into to words, but that's where... I, that's like... The rights of humanity is the core of humanity. And appealing to those rights, def defending, giving a human their human rights, like to be educated, to live, to be well fed, is something that Castro does for his people. And you can blab on all about human rights, but the rights of humanity are fulfilled for those people. And again, that's an amazing statement. I don't. Also, he goes on in that little speech and says a whole bunch of other things that are, are very powerful statements as well. As well. Just like, why do people drive expensive automobiles so that others can have, so that others can walk on bare feet? Why do some people live to be 70 so that others can live to be 35? Why do why some people have to be so excessively rich so that others are so miserably poor? All just brilliant questions, all just questions that I can't answer, and in a way that... It's it's just not right to think about the world in terms of that. And it's a question that I can't answer. And it's a question that I don't think anyone can answer. But I'm running out of time. I know that was really convoluted. And that was a, 
a lot of rambling, but I hope I got my point across. I might go into deeper detail later down the line, but for now, this is it. This is Joseph Hironovich Stalin, signing off for now, and I'll see you guys later.